Well, you know, I, I'm just trying to turn the television off and not read the newspapers. But boy, I'll tell you, it's more polarizing than it's ever been, or at least as long as I can ever remember. I mean, I've been in this business for three decades now. I've just never seen so much polarization between both parties not willing to negotiate. And the end result right now is that the markets are just shrugging their shoulders, don't seem to care. So somehow, I mean, I believe markets are typically never caught off guard. And because of that, maybe something will work out at the very end just like it always does i mean i can't imagine it but it seems to be the case because markets just don't seem to care right now okay yeah and then asking you about that i mean what's your thinking then on the fomc and, and what it's going to do and and importantly what the market has priced in yeah, you know, I think the most important thing tomorrow is uh, the, the guidance, especially for 2016. I mean, let's face it, uh, if Bernanke comes out and says, like, Fed funds, which now are a quarter percent in the U.S., he's expecting full employment, economy that's healed, and Fed funds rates of 2.5% or less, that would be very, very good for risk assets. Anything above that, I think, will have a big downdraft. But it's hard to believe it's almost comical when you think about it that he's looking towards 2016 and saying we have a healthy economy, but yet the Fed's fund, funds rate's only going to be 2.5% when history typically shows it should be 4, 4.5%. 4 but all that to say, I think the market's pricing in, hoping 2.5% or less for the uh, Fed funds rate 2016. And there is obviously a long way away, but uh, what do you think for 2016? You sound a bit sceptical. Do you think we're going to see a, a better economy by then, or perhaps an economy is still trying to recover from some of its uh, current troubles? Yeah, you know, uh, there's so many things to worry about. There's so many minefields and potholes and stuff like that. And, and when I see all that, I realize that these are known things the market already knows about. And I do think we are healing. I mean, I don't think our employment situation is much better. But beyond that, we're seeing, um, you know, there's, there's so many uh, numbers that are coming out a little bit better than expected. We're going along very slowly. Inventory levels seem to be low. Wage compensation, that's bad for the employee is low, but that's helping the stock market. All that to say, I think we are healing. We have a long road to go, but we're in a structural bull market. And when for you would you, would you say, I guess, the, the market or the economy in recovery? What, what numbers are you looking for? What metrics are you looking for that will say to you, yes, we, we've finally arrived. Everything's back on track and we're out of the woods. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, right now, it's definitely not the unemployment number. It's more the PMI numbers and the industrial production numbers, inventory levels, things like that. Because, good grief, you look at the um, unemployment rate, that's getting better, but the employment rate's not getting better. And we have wage compensation in the U.S. That's at its lowest level uh, since World War II, if you put it in uh, inflation-adjusted terms. So I'm looking at more at the manufacturing sector, the output sector. We are healing just a little bit. It's hard to believe, but I do think that we're going to have uh, an upward uh, equity bias for some time to come. Just on, you know, what you were saying there about the unemployment target, because there's been a lot of um, talk that with Yellen now the, the front runner, now that Larry Summers has uh, pulled out of the race, um, obviously she's spoken a lot about her concerns about the unemployment rate, that perhaps that could be reduced to 5.5% from 6.5%, but you're saying we should watch more the inflation. Um, what did you make then of that data that we saw overnight? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point because I think they've talked about the, the unemployment rate so much that they keep uh, adjusting it or talking about adjusting it. It just becomes, you know, the Fed ends up losing credibility. One thing they could do is adjust the floor for inflation. Right now it's 2.5%. That's something they could talk about because, just because uh, inflation in the U.S. is so low right now that they could change that number without the market perception changing a whole lot. Just um, looking at the, the gains that we're seeing in, in markets, um, the S&P 500 just five points shy of the, the all-time high there. Um, what are you doing then in terms of investment right now? Well, other than keeping myself broadly diversified, I'm looking at um, overweight base metals right now, especially, uh, you know, relative to the energy markets. I think it's still a good time to be long gold, silver, copper, uh, both, you know, precious and base metals. Uh, I do like the stock market. I continue to believe it's, it's a great healing story. Um, and I do like dabbling in the emerging market stock markets, I think, especially something like Mexico. I mean, they've got a government that's really doing things the right way a good time to get into Mexico.
Larry, Australian investors are obviously very keen on, on resources and, and metals in particular. I'm curious as to your, your exposure to base metals. You're liking gold and silver. Are you seeing that as a, as a volume play? Is, is it a China export story? Or are you seeing that maybe it's a, it's a price play and there'll be profit recovery through higher prices coming up soon? Yeah, great question. I think it's, you know, at least with the precious metals, with gold, as you would probably agree, 1310, 1300 seems to be a huge support level. And there's so much momentum to try to uncover that demand support. And it really does have no home. I think momentum is a really hard thing to gauge, but I do believe everybody should have it in his portfolio. When you go into like industrial metals, something like copper, iron ore, I do believe, or aluminum, it's, you know, when you have the story in China, I mean, I know the numbers last night came out very poorly. But overall, they are recovering. They're doing better. That's going to filter over into the emerging markets in the Far East. I think it's just a good play. And I think copper especially has been beaten down way too far for way too long.